Hi there guys and thanks for checking out this little tutorial. Um, in this video I'm hoping to address um, how to remedy pixelation in an export through Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, now pixelation in an export is something that I have actually rarely um, encountered. Um, however, recently for a client project um, it has occurred throughout a, a feature length uh, video. And so you got two factors against you there, obviously a massive export time whenever you're exporting in 4K for the client, uh, but also once you finally get to the end of it uh, and scrub through um, the file before sending it across or upload it to YouTube, um, it's laced with pixels and uh, pixelated drags um, when there's movement on screen. I'm gonna pop a little um, crude uh, screenshot onto the screen here just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and as you'll be able to see here, um, it literally it looks like something out of the matrix. <laughs> it's not usable in any form. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to fix this. Um, now, we're gonna jump into Adobe Premiere uh, very shortly here um, to uh, have a finer look at, at what's going on. Um, but something that I need to make clear off the bat is this cannot be predicted on the monitor within the editing software. This is something which exclusively occurs uh, once you export uh, and it'll happen through the scrub through whether you're uh, playing it back on VLC media player or, um, or Windows media player. So the very first thing to take into account is you must make sure that your sequence settings match your input, your input being your shots. So if you've shot in 4K, make sure that your sequence is in 4K. This can occur whenever you jumble the sequence settings and the resolution of the shots. Uh, as I say, that hasn't happened in my experience, but in my research on how to remedy it, that's something that I learned. Uh, so make sure that your sequence settings match the uh, input. Uh, but here, without any further ado, we're going to jump into Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, and instead of actually using the shot, because it is a client video of mine, um, we're just going to use the uh, screen grab as an example um, of how to remedy this. So I'll see you in Premiere. So here we are, guys. We're in Adobe Premiere Pro, and the version is currently 22.2.0, build 128. Uh, but with absolutely no reason to believe that this, uh, the information in this video uh, will be invalidated by future builds of Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, for the sake of argument, I have the uh, previously used screenshot in the timeline here. Um, the only reason I don't want to use the real world client uh, timeline is because the client hasn't uh, used the video content yet uh, and I want obviously them to have uh, priority on their own content. So for the sake of argument I'm just going to load in the uh, screenshot here but as you can see it is absolutely uh, it's absolutely savage <laughs> especially after a feature length export um, to scrub through and to find this it really is a worst case scenario. So the fix if we hit control M we can see the previous sequence sentence, or excuse me, the previous export sentence um, for this video. 99% of the time, I have not had an issue with H.264 and a simple match source high bit rate just for delivering a review copy to uh, the client. And then obviously you can bump up uh, the bit rate and such um, if you are uh, delivering you know, the, the higher quality stuff uh, for the client. But for a review, a simple high source, or match source high bit rate is absolutely fine. On this occasion though, it did not go so well. <laughs> so the fix, we're gonna switch from H.264 to HEVC, AKA H.265. Um, and we're just gonna go with a match source high bit rate. However, Adobe gives plenty of options here um, to um, stretch out on the export. This is the solution to uh, this pixelated export. Um, HEVC compression is 50% more efficient than AVC. Um, so you will arguably get a, uh, a shorter export time with um, a lot higher video quality going forward. Um, the other way you can fix this, which didn't exactly suit me because obviously of the runtime of the video, is by switching over to QuickTime uh, and uh, exporting with um, an Apple ProRes preset. Um, I use this also, however, with a, with a feature length video, uh, the file size is in and around 350 gigabytes in my experience, uh, so it's utterly uh, useless to the client, you cannot get it onto YouTube. Um, it does fix the pixelation, it's a much tighter export, um, but on this occasion, 
we're going to go with uh, VH.265 as the solution uh, and certainly uh, the results that I got from this were absolutely fantastic. Uh, as I previously mentioned, 0.264 was my standard and has been for years. However, going forward, um, 0.265 ensures that this does not happen. Um, it is a more modern codec for modern devices, um, a far better um, and a far better output. I'll get my tongue back. So, look, I hope this helps, guys. We're going to jump back into the studio here just uh, for the outro, but switch to H.265 and it will absolutely eliminate any risk of pixelation in your export. And there we have it guys, one last thing to worry about whenever we're exporting, whether it's a long video or a short video, the H.265 codec should keep us right and help us avoid pixelation from here on in. Um, I hope you find this little tutorial video helpful. If you did, please drop a like, please drop us a subscription. Um, I'm certainly hoping to make more of these kind of tutorial style troubleshooting videos going forward um, with little topics like this that may stand in the way of you making the best possible videos, whether it's for yourself as a hobby uh, or for clients. Um, so drop us a like, drop us a subscription, and if there's any topics or anything that you want me to cover in the video, drop a little comment down below um, and I'll certainly consider making a video for it if I know the solution. Um, but anyway, thanks again for watching guys, really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.